Hi. I really liked your uh, video that, where you compared the four different solar panels as far as which one was more efficient. Yeah. That was a great video. That was so crazy, man. <laughs> it was fun. The price <laughs> difference, too, was ridiculous. Do you have any uh, comments on a uh, MPPT controller, a favorite brand or whatever, or a couple of brands in terms of features and, and price, performance, and so forth? For let's say two to five hundred watt system. What kind of battery? Uh, I'm doing Trojans, lead acid, flooded. Mm hmm. Each one has so many pros and cons. I'm just going through every single one in my head. I would say Victron's a solid choice, but those input terminals are pretty lousy, mm -hmm. and they create lots of heat in the. Tr multi-point tracking is not that great i've actually taken like controllers that are one fourth the price and they work just as well um hmm power wise well you can get any size i mean you can get 10 20 all the way up to 100 oh oh <laughs> those the ones on amazon right the cheap ones 60 amp are you sure? I'm pretty sure I got one of those ones. Um, shake it, and if it rattles, I'm pretty sure it's that one. Um, there are some really cheap ones they keep sending me, and they're just complete junk. Right, right. Right. I see. I'd, ha I'd have to see it, then I, I'm not familiar with every single one. Most MPPTs work as advertised. Um, I like EP Ever. Everyone knows that I like those mm. because I've used them for so long. I mean, I've used like almost everything that I recommend on the site, I use for multiple years. So I never give a recommendation unless I've used it and I've almost destroyed it. Like, for example, EP Ever is the BN series. I've connected two Tesla batteries with it, I've overcurrented those. I've done things that you should never, ever, ever do, and it handled it. I've done it to other ones, and they were destroyed instantly. I mean, I've blown up converter boards. I've done, like, it, yeah, those ones are really good, the EP Evers. Some people say that the cheapest model by EP Ever um, does not have good tracking. There's a guy from Oregon that told me that recently, and that the working voltage at the input side is not favorable for a true, like, he looked at the data sheet of the solar panel and it wasn't matching the number so i would just get the more expensive ep ever but if you have money get a victron victrons are great it's so sad it's hard to like please everybody because i'll tell you what you should get and it's going to cost a lot of money and people get mad but then <laughs> and then i post like a cheap one and then the electrical engineer guys are like, why would you tell us that, Will? Why would you do this? You're completely losing my trust. And I'm like, dude, we, we need, like, you know, options. And there's lots of options. So um, also with any kind of controller, I know it's CE listed. I don't know if it's UL listed, but Victron has safety certifications. Also Outback in PPT. And also, God, what is the other one? It is super common. It's, which one? Not blue sky. Blue sky can catch on fire. Yeah. Um, it's a really old company. God, what is it called? But it's potted. It's safety certified. You don't have to worry about it for 30 years. So you could use those. But um, also, you know, my videos are fun. I get to talk, and it's neat. And we get to build stuff. But what I recommend is on the website at mobile-solarpower.com and that way I can update it all the time for example Victron came out with a new recommendation for battery protect they recommended it in professional solar installers installed it in RVs they don't recommend that anymore and that's a new update a couple weeks ago so I can go on the website and change it and then I put an update on the video people don't go to the description of every video to check if there's a safety update so if you want accurate recommendations from me, at least, not from every, everybody has their own recommendation, but for me and what I've tested, it's going to be on the website. But um, yeah, tr uh, EP Evers are really good and Victron's really good. There's so many options. Even the Renogy, the new one is so easy to program. The new one with lithium enabled and Bluetooth. 
I have one of those and it works perfectly. I haven't used it for multiple years though, so I can't give a full recommendation. What's cool about Renogy though is they, it's funny because there's all these different distributors on Amazon and some are closer and farther away from the manufacturer than others. So some people actually have a say in design and if enough people complain, they fix it, right? Um, and Renogy is one of those companies. If something's wrong, they fix it. Even if they have a thousand batteries, they'll ship them back. Um, there's a lot of other guys, like entrepreneurs my age, and they'll fill up an Amazon warehouse and they want to make a quick buck. And they're like, oh, uh, uh, solar's really big right now. We need to sell all these batteries. And you find out they're defective and they're going to try to push it through. They just push it through the van and RV channels. And they're like, oh, my God, look at this. It's amazing. And it's like they're trying to push a thousand units. That's what they're doing. They're, they don't really care about you in 10 years. But... Uh, what were, oh, oh, yeah, solar charge controls. That's right. Okay. <laughs> oh, you do? Oh, cool. Nice. Thank you. Awesome. That was a fun book. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, two things. Yeah. Um, first of all, could you address the... Um, we haven't talked about the advantage of the lithium battery in the charge rate, especially when you're in a funky day or overhead clouds. It charges right up really fast. Big advantage over lead. But what I would like you to address is uh, mixing and matching different types of panels and what we can get away with, what we can do, and what we can't do. We haven't talked about that yet, so thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the solar panel. Was there a first question? It was a solar panel was fresh in my mind, but what was the first one? Oh, fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if power is available and you have a lithium battery, it just absorbs it, okay? It, any power that's available, it will push it the instant that there's sunlight available. If you have a flooded lead acid and it's a golf cart battery from Costco or Walmart and you're trying to charge even a fully charged, you know what's interesting about this is if you have a flooded lead acid battery and it's at 50%, the efficiency is actually higher and it will charge pretty quickly because it's bulk charge. But as it increases and increases, it slows and slows because the internal resistance is increasing. With a lithium battery, you're like full charge rate, full charge rate, full charge rate, boom, you're done, right? It's instant, you're done, you don't have to worry, complain, nothing. With lead, it's like, oh, I'm rising, it's so easy, oh, it's harder, it's harder, no, I don't want any more. And, and once it's at the tip top and you're going from like 90 to 100, the efficiency decreases, and you can get down to numbers in the data sheets to 55% efficiency. That means you have 1,000 watts of solar. No, you have 500 watts of solar now. Like, it's horrible. It's so hard to push power into lead-acid batteries. Um, there are expensive lead-acid batteries, and they have certain specific cell designs and electrolyte formulations and plate designs, and they can charge faster than the cheap Walmart ones, but it's still horrible. But with lead acid, an AGM will charge much faster than a flooded. And that's why if you're on a budget, you should still go with AGM. Even if like you are super screwed money-wise, just get a sealed battery over flooded. The benefits just efficiency-wise and how fast you can charge alone will save you money with how much you'd have to pay for solar panels. So really important point, actually. Lithium, <laughs> once you get lithium, you never go back. Tell me one person that has gotten a lithium battery and was like, oh, no, nah, this isn't fun. Yeah, no, nobody's done that. <laughs> Let me return this Battleborn. When did you hear that? <laughs> it doesn't happen. You just get it. Actually, I've been using Battleborn a lot lately. And, and I have other battery options. And, God, it sounds like I'm, because I'm sponsored, I hate it. Because, you know, you think, oh, he's, he's you know, biased. And, like, you just don't have to worry about it, though. You just throw it in there, and it's done. But, uh, yeah, there's lots of other good battery options. Kilo Vault, Simplify, Life Blue, um, the Trojan Trillium, and also the, uh, what's that other manufacturer? They have the self-heating battery. There's lots of good ones. But what's interesting, though, is that the cost for a Simplify is like $1,300 for a 100 amp hour. That's a lot of money. Uh, and people complain about Battleborn. That's <laughs> Battleborn's cheap compared to those ones. So, uh, yeah, and then you have a Ruxu that's seven hundred dollars. No low temp disconnect. Uh, MOSFETs that can fuse and be completely screwed, but um, cheap components. Uh, it's just.
crap. And it's, it's so funny because if you're spending seven hundred dollars and it can fail instantly and you lose your whole investment, might as well spend an extra hundred bucks. Even not even for Battleborn, just get something with low temp disconnect. Don't put five thousand dollars into something that can be destroyed in two minutes, depending on the temperature. That's insane. Why would somebody do that? <laughs> it's crazy. It's like money out the door. And then they're like, oh no, I'm being so cheap. I'm like, God, you are the most expensive. You, Yeah. Do not be cheap with electrical. Always spend more money. And I hate saying it, and I'm cheap, and I, I still buy all my shirts from Goodwill. <laughs> I'm like, seriously, do not spend, be cheap with solar. But yeah, next question. And I apologize. I didn't see the beginning of your re thing. Oh, mix and match. Can I answer this real quick? Yes. It'll be really quick. So... If you have two panels and they are the same voltage rating, you can put them in parallel. Okay, parallel. That means that the positive and the positive are connected, and the negative and the negative are connected. That goes into your MPPT, and you're done. If you have a 100-watt panel and a 1,000-watt panel, but they have the same amp rating, you can put them in series. Okay? Series means that you daisy-chain it. That means you have a positive and a negative. And then that negative connects to the positive of the panel next to it. And then you have a negative, and you just daisy chain them. So you could have like a 100 watt panel and a 1 watt panel, and you can safely connect them if they have the same amp rating. But if they have the, a different voltage rating, which they will if they're that different in size, <laughs> which you'd be hard pressed. I'm trying to make examples that are very unlikely, but just so you wrap your mind around it. But if let's say you have a 100 watt panel and a 1000 watt panel, and they have the same voltage, you can put them together in parallel. So uh, you can put any panels together. You could put like the cheapest, nastiest looking panel with a sun power solar cell, copper backed, really expensive, fancy stuff, <laughs> uh, solar cell panel. But um, yeah, you just have to follow that rule. It's easy. Any panels, just throw them together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On your website at one time, you had the one unit was inverter, charger, MP3 that you showed. I bought one of those. <laughs> nice. Which one? 800 watt inverter? 50. I don't, I don't have any of those. Um, what, what, what's the, who makes it? I don't know. It came from England. <laughs> but my, my question for you, though, is because it's an inverter and a charger, do I have to have it on all the time? For it to charge, because the solar goes into it, do mm -hmm. I have to have it on all the time for it to be charging my batteries? Because then the inverter would be using power, would it not? Or Yeah, yeah, it uses power when it's on. So, But I'm saying, do I have to have it on all the time for the solar to be charging my batteries? So when you turn the switch off and you have sunshine, does it still charge? Does it show it? I don't know. It? I don't have my solar hooked up yet. That's my, I'm, my question is, do I get rid of that because I haven't... I'm waiting to have my solar installed. Did you get a 24 volt or 12 volt model? 12. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you have the PIP P I P L V 1208 or something like that. I forgot the model number. But what all you have to do is, if it's connected to solar, it charges. Okay, whether it's on or not. Whether the inverter is on or not, okay. it's it's done. It's perfect. Works perfect. Yeah. But uh, if it's another model, you scared me because I wasn't sure at first which one you're talking about. I think it's the MPP. And it's like a box like this big. Yeah, you should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no way. Oh, that's good. I hope, I hope you guys have the book after I revised it. <laughs> there was like so much lazy grammar errors. I was like rushing the first one. My God. Now it's good. It's, it's, it's solid. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I was inspired that even I could put it together with your um, 400 watt DIY video. Oh, you did? Video. Yeah, Good job. Like, although I did hire somebody to help me. <laughs> oh, it's fun, yeah. But um, anyway, on my uh, current system, I was wondering what a FEP error well, it wasn't an error. FEP. FEP, FEP danger. Um, Wait, which system component? It, is it the charge controller? It was, it was on the, the Magnum. Um, Ooh, you have a Magnum. Yeah. 
And, and I wasn't sure if it was because I had a bunch of tarps on, on my, well, I, I have Battleborns. So right. I had a bunch of tarps stored in the same compartment. Do they need um, air around them? You need airflow. Okay, so so it was. But but I have friends and they have complained so much about those. So, what size inverter is it? Three three thousand. Ah, oh, dang it! If it was tiny, I'd tell you to just buy another one. Because it's big and you probably don't want to spend the money. Mm. Well, yeah, look up the manual and figure out what that error code is. I do not like Magnum just because one of my friends, he does utility grid system design, and he's a freaking genius. He's so smart. Um, he makes YouTube videos, but no one sees them because they're too technical, and he avoids those like the plague. So, yeah, Magnum. Um, I got an Arizona no. Wind and Sun. They're a great shop, but... Yeah. That's what they recommend. I'm ignorant to those, though. I've never had one. It, 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 my everything complained. was fine uh, yeah. with it. And I, I freaked out and turned, the, turned Does everything it work? off. Is there voltage? Is there power? Yeah, I freaked out and turned everything off because I had been driving. It might be an over temperature or it might be under voltage. It might yeah. be over voltage because maybe your equalized function on charge controller. Mm. Um, yeah, just look up that in the manual. And uh, I have no idea. After I turned everything <laughs> off. Turned the circuit breaker, yeah. turned everything off, then turned it all back on. Everything's good now. But it's just, I had too much uh, stuff inside there, the battery compartment. Okay. It could be that. They're, those have also over circuit protection for, or I mean over current protection on the uh, AC output. So it could have been triggering that. There's quite a few things. Yeah, it, air codes for inverters, there, there's quite a few safety features on those. So I'm not sure. But uh, if it works now, just everything's fine now. Yeah, just be. Yeah, just <laughs> okay. let be. Okay. Don't touch it. <laughs> That's you. what I do nowadays. I'm like, know, okay, it's, like, it's okay now. But <laughs> like okay. when you go on vacation, you leave your RV and it has like, you know, huge battery bank, and you're like, should I leave it like that? Because I always mess with my systems, and I'm always like, I mean, I do it to spec, but you know, when I'm off video, I kind of just like throw things around. Because as long as it's mathematically correct, I don't give a. Cr I mean, <laughs> it works. It works. So. But people make their systems look a lot more beautiful than my systems. But, yeah, it should be fun. Just okay, thank you, Will. Thank oh, you yeah. for your inspiration. Oh, thank you. Alo Aloha. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Will. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Um, I had uh, your book. Oh, cool. So, um, wow, everybody's having that book. That's so cool. Uh, last uh, May, I was buying some Life Blue. And oh, at nice. the time I was buying them, they had a new model come out, and we had a discussion earlier, and it was about uh, low temperature charging. Mm. And they have a model now. I was wondering what your thoughts are on that. It has built-in heaters. So I right. got two of uh, those, and I'm just oh. wondering what you think about them. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So there's quite a few heater systems. Right now, Relyon, they started it, at least from what I can tell. And I think they just use a resistive heat pad in... You know, when it gets cold, it turns on. I'm not sure what kind they use in there. And there are quite a few different heating elements. And how they wrap it around the cells will determine, you know, its effectiveness. And also the temperature sensor placement. And also, like, the cell module design and case. So I don't know. But <laughs> I'm sure, like, if it's from them, they are selling lots of batteries. And I haven't heard complaints. So I'd imagine it's good. It's funny though, because no one's testing that. So I'm gonna actually buy a freezer and stick a bunch of batteries in it and show people. And I actually have some that are, uh, I'm gonna destroy. <laughs> it'll be pretty cool. So it'll be sweet. Um, actually some of the manufacturers, the distributors also, they, well, they're manufacturers, but they have a warehouse here. And they're like, they have all these returns. So they send them to me and I get to destroy them. And I don't make videos because someone might copy me or like, oh, I can do it too. And like, they'll burn their house down. So it's it will be super fun to test that. But yeah, Life Blue is, I mean, if you were telling me like some cheap Chinese company, I'd be like, oh, I don't know about that. But yeah, you should be fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, it should be all right. <laughs> you should check though with them and uh, see how well those work. I think the only problem with the self-heating batteries is if it uses too much power to heat up those cells. And if you have self-heating lithium iron phosphate batteries, you guys need to insulate those battery compartments. 
So get that, you know, high R factor rating foam and make a box around them. And so that when it generates heat, it stays in there because that will determine how well it works. Um, because even if it's an inefficient heat pad, the conversion is still 100% because you're just converting to um, radiant heat. So just insulate. You could stick your batteries in an ice box. You could stick it. I got a Craftsman box for my solar shed that I'm building right now. Or I built it already, but I'm still modifying it. And I just put a bunch of foam around it and on the bottom. And that's it. I mean, it's done. I don't even have to think about it. I have a heater pad with um, steel sheet underneath, but it probably won't even need it. It's funny, yeah, it, it, you don't have to worry about it. It's so nice because people are actually spending more money and you don't have to worry as much. Because if you had said that you had a Ruxu, I'd be like, all right, listen, you cannot do this, you can't do that. But yeah, you should be all right. <laughs> Hi, Will, a uh, long time fan. Oh, cool. And uh, I heard you on the radio earlier came over because you said uh, gel batteries are a bad idea. And I actually, <laughs> I actually wanted to build a system with a gel battery because they can be charged at up to minus 25 uh, centigrade. Right. It's for a shed, so we we'll probably won't be there for like weeks and months. And if it's winter, it could definitely get into freezing and we want to power like a small security system. So what do you say for that? It's a good idea to do it? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. I mean, it, you can do it. It will work. <laughs> but um, so lead acid, when it's cold, the capacity is reduced instantly. And also the internal resistance is higher, so it's harder to push in and out. So it can charge but you don't want to anyways. That's the funny thing is people will be like, well, my lead acids can do this, they can do that. But all batteries do not like the heat. All batteries do not like the cold. Um, they are engineered specifically to work with what human temperatures we deal with. I mean, the electrolyte formulations and everything else. You can actually make lower temperature batteries and design them and stuff, but most people aren't in those environments. I mean, if you lived in Antarctica where jet fuel can freeze, I understand, you know, like it makes sense. But, and for your specified application, you need that. But if you are just topping off those batteries and it's just for running a security system, you're not deeply discharging them. So you don't really need the capacity. So you could um, use kind of whatever you want, really. Just make sure you have enough solar so it charges up fast enough and that for the load and the duration and if you have a cloudy day, you have enough backup power or days of autonomy for it to compensate for those loads. But yeah, um, just crank those panels, just, you know, put more and more and more. And just, if it doesn't work, just add more panels. <laughs> That's how I do it. I mean, geez, you never so, know. So you would go also lithium with a heating pad or something like that for that. Ooh, okay. If you need it for 20 years, use lithium. If you need it for a long time, I'll get like a Simplify insulated box heater. Yes. If you don't want to put, you know, 10 grand towards it, gel batteries will work just fine. Yeah, initially it's going to be very simple. Not even an yeah. inverter, just 5 volt oh, really? USB plugs um, for uh, um, like a hotspot and a um, hub for the, for the cameras, for the security cameras. You should be fine. Yeah, just let it be as cheap as possible. And uh, if you need more power. The one thing I would think about, though, is the cutoff. So if you have reduced capacity and it's cold and you're discharging at night, even with small loads, we did the math in one of my videos. We had a 100 amp hour battery and we cut it down to 50 amp hours for depth of discharge, right? And then at cold temperature, we took the line on the graph and we had like, I don't know, 20% capacity. So we got out of a 100 amp hour battery, 16 amp hours. So you need to think about that. If you have lithium, you have 100. So that's a big selling point. That's where a lot of battery manufacturers are like, yeah, ours are the best thing in the world. And, uh, but yeah, lead acid, performance in cold or excessively hot, they degrade quickly. Just batteries don't like excessive temperatures at all, either way you put it, but it will work. And you know what you could do is just add more solar panels and have a low voltage disconnect and so if you do use up too much and it's too low and the reduced capacity does hit that, if you have a battery protect like the $50 one, that works great for DC loads.
But yeah, they had the new update that you can't connect inverters like two weeks ago. And that was news to me. I actually had a one of the service reps for one of their return departments tell me that on the forum. If you guys want updated, crazy, technical, great information and beginner, we have a beginner's corner. I, we have a forum now and it's free for everyone. There's no corporate sponsorship. Um, it's DIYSolarForum.com and it's, it has every, it's like um, encrypted. We can, you can post whatever pictures you want. So yeah, if you want specific help, there are so many people on there willing to help anybody. It's crazy. But yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Okay, cool. Thanks so much. Everybody, uh, everybody keeps asking, you know, will it run my air conditioner? Um, that's, I mean, I'm on the, one of the solar install teams, and everybody keeps asking that. What's the best combination of solar panels to batteries? How many batteries? How many amp hours? You know, I mean, uh, you know, of, from your perspective, you want to talk about that because everybody wants to run. An air conditioner, you know, and maybe maybe get into you know five thousand BTU versus twelve thousand BTU or whatever. But I think that's it's a question that I, everybody keeps asking: is yeah. will it run my AC? You know, and you know some people, yeah, it'll run your AC for forty five minutes. You know what I mean? You know, or you know, I don't know. Talk about that. <laughs> He's already doing it. <laughs> um, so I think the biggest constraining factor with air conditioning systems on RVs and vans. Okay, think about how much roof space you have and how much power you can make with those solar panels. All right, so let's take that total amount that you can possibly create for the day. If you have unlimited batteries, how much can your roof actually collect? Um, it's not a whole lot, right? So what you need to do is build an air conditioning system that it doesn't really matter about the size. Um, if your inverter system can run it and your batteries can support it, you can power a 5,000 watt or, I mean, I was running Tesla 16 amps at 240 volts, so I can do some serious power with a small system. Um, but, so the output's not an issue. It's where are you going to get the power, right? Where it doesn't come out of thin air, we actually collect it. We're harvesting it right now. So uh, you have to think about how much power your roof can make. And I think the most determinant factor of actually using an air conditioner is how insulated your rig is. Because when you talk about temperature and thermal efficiency, these things, these metal rigs, like that van over there, it loses heat very easily and it can absorb heat very easily, right? If you put an air conditioner in that thing, it's gonna be very difficult. If you have like this much of a high R rating, you know, insulation all the way around and it's like, you know, those refrigerator boxes and people will change that out. It's a box truck with a refrigerator unit. If you take one of those, and you put a tiny air conditioner, you run it for 30 minutes and you're cold as heck for the next two or three hours, you're gonna be set. You don't need that much solar power. So it has to do with, yeah, thermal efficiency. But uh, yeah, electricity is crazy because right now we're extracting it from the sun onto these panels and then we can make things hot or cold and we can move things. It's just so weird, it's like freaking magic. But um, yeah, when it comes to thermal efficiency, you need to make sure that every hole and crack and crevice. It is so hard to insulate these rigs if you do it right. Um, even if you buy a brand new 2020, you know, whatever um, RV, there is holes everywhere. It's not insulated at all. Uh, there's little vents for the propane system everywhere, little cracks and crevices around the fridge. Um, I tried to seal those holes in one of my systems and I had an air conditioner and it just sucked. It just sucked horribly. So uh, what I did is I took a fan and I stuck it on the bottom of that RV, it was the Toyota Dolphin, and it brought cold air from underneath my rig. And that was actually the most energy efficient way to cool an RV for me. If you're in the shade and you have a fan kicking the air, but if you're out here and it's 110 or 120 or something, you're dead and you might as well just move. Like, why would you stay here? You have wheels. <laughs> I know. <laughs> People do, I see them out here though, they're, they stay out here, it's 120 degrees and they're just, I saw a guy down the street here, do you guys see that RV with the solar panels that are tilted? That's you? That's ridiculous, what are you powering? Oh, that's what you're doing, air conditioning, you got the freaking crank in it. That's yours, my goodness, I want to see the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, those indoor, like those ones that people, I hate those ones with the hose. 
and it's a hot hose and it just dumps heat into your RV. It's so bad the efficiency in the split system. Split systems cost a lot though, but they're. Oh, nice. Nice. That's really good. Amazon. I love Amazon. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go ahead and make uh, Steve here the last question. By a show of hands, who here has Will's book here? I didn't. He, he didn't bring any, unfortunately. But uh, if, if you guys have Will's book and, your <laughs> book and the book is here, why don't you go ahead and grab it right now because we're only going to have him for a few more minutes and maybe we can get him to sign it for you if you're willing to do that, Will. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> No, sir. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, and there goes me giving you a shirt at the end of this, too, by the way. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, we'll make Steve uh, the last question. And uh, Dang and, it. And if you guys have his book and want to round that up, I'm sure he'll sign it for you and take a picture with you, maybe. But uh, here's Steve. So my question is a little off the wall. I'm a pretty technical guy. I'm thinking about running a high-voltage uh, system, 48-volt, whatever, 24-volt. Sweet. Um, but what I really want to do, and this is... <laughs> Go all the way. <laughs> in, um, I mean, there's an issue with the 12-volt stuff uh, that I want to run off of it. But aside from that, uh, what I'd really like to do, what they're doing in Australia now in the home solar systems is uh, once your batteries get full, they'll take the power and divert it over into a hot tank and then, you know, heat up your hot water. Right. Um, and the way that I see it, you know, you can get that maybe from a uh, charge controller, a separate little bit to flip that over. Uh, just right. to toggle over a relay or something. Are you familiar with anything like that here in the U.S.? Absolutely. So what we do, depends on what you're talking, if it's grid tie or off-grid. So with off-grid, off are grid. you doing off-grid? Off-grid, okay. yeah. That's a lot easier. So just think about it this way. You have your battery bank, and once it rises to a certain voltage, anything over that voltage is excess power, right? If you have lithium iron phosphate and you look at the charge curve, it's like a log curve at the end and it just shoots up and then the voltage sells to 13.3 volts. So you could easily have a voltage sensitive relay, which you can buy on Amazon for $15. <laughs> Non-affiliated. <laughs> but it's so, and even if it's a cheap one that sucks, but it has <laughs> the, the voltage sensing, you could use it to run a larger relay a tiny right. relay to a right. big relay yep. and those are like 200 to 500 amps for 16 bucks and i have one in the mail right now but it keeps taking forever to come here but um you use that so when the voltage rises and your batteries are full it just kicks on the water heater from the battery bank directly and that's the easiest there are so many other ways you can do it another way that we could do it is take a charge controller right and you know the terminal load outputs um, that I always tell people not to use because there's an OCPD for like 10 or 20 amps and it's a pain in the butt because it always trips it even with like 5 amps sometimes if it has capacitors. So what you want to do is you just take those and everybody has an MPPT with load terminals and a lot of them have what's called a load dump option. So if it gets too high of a voltage, it will dump the excess amount of power just directly into those terminals. But just use the terminals as a relay switch so you just turn on a relay with it mm -hmm. and you can do that with like a 40 dollar controller and you can power anything you could power a i mean you could power like 200 to 500 amps with a relay so it's it's super simple but voltage sensitive relay and charge controller relay outputs are the best way to do it but um it's super fun also though um um how big is your water tank and what kind of heating element and what are you doing so what I'm planning on doing, I, I don't have this picked out yet, but what, what I'm planning on doing is not switching over the DC, well, switch over the high voltage DC side from the cells. Mm -hmm. And so when that relay kicks in, it would just take whatever voltage is coming out of the array, whatever current's coming out of the array, and feed that into, oh, feed no. that into the hot water tank. It'll, it's a variable. I know oh, it's the wrong voltage. I know, I mean, yeah. so I'm probably, I may change a heating element, whatever. I'm just curious if you are aware of anybody's doing anything like that here in the US. I've only seen it in Australia. So you can do it. How are they doing in Australia? Is it grid tie or off grid? It's in the charge controller. Uh, their charge controller. I was hoping that uh, someone would be here. That's a charge controller company that you know could yeah. just talk to them about it a little bit. Um, it, it wouldn't take it, much to design it in. It wouldn't. I don't think. I think all of them have that same thing. Even the cheap ones. I'm pretty sure Australia ones do too. Are you talking about um, Kick Ass? Is it that distributor? Um, or is it? That's the name of the company, by the way. It doesn't. It's Kick Ass. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound right. Oh, okay. Um, they have all sorts of interesting little um, dump options for heat systems. But you know what, though? Uh, when you have a water tank heating element, 
there's a certain resistance, right? And you push a certain voltage and it will do a certain amount of watts. If you have a battery bank connected to a relay and it's connected to a regulated, well, it's a kind of a regulated source because a battery will stay continuously, right? So that heating element will push only 400, 800, 1200 watts. And you like that because if you had it connected to solar panels directly, it will be variable and you don't want that. So I figure with the variability, you know, you just you have a thermostat on on the hot tank, and eventually that ther once it gets to hundred, it's just like the battery being full. So right, right. however you heat it with whatever, you know, whatever the sun is doing, heat the hot water up that way. I mean, rather than have a hot, I thought about putting a hot tank on top, but the uh, or a solar hot water tank, but nobody, there, at least what I was reading in Australia, nobody does that anymore. That uh, you just use your extra sol your solar extra excess, especially if you have big panels and a small. Yeah batteries you know to just heat up use it as another storage mechanism which as long as the thermostat's set and and it's protected that way i mean you have to you'd have to power the heater though wouldn't you the water heater itself has that one so, so so if you're running 48 volt so open circuit for that panel is going to be like what 60 or 80 no it's 80 and then it drops to 62 i think working voltage so you don't want to connect a array to a heating element I've done resistive loads with solar for testing, and I would take the maximum power point, take the ohms, and I'd figure out how to push it to its limit. You don't want to do that with a heating element. Also, with heating elements, if you think about it, like when it gets really hot and there's nowhere to put the heat, I mean, you would have a relay system, but you don't want to have a, you know, a 200 volt <laughs> system. You just want to have a 48 volt system and run it directly to the thermostat system or you could have a step down converter, but the efficiency is fine. Just run it off the battery. Don't mess with anything else. It's just a relay. It's one switch and you'll be done. Yeah. Just big wires, make sure it's, yeah. Super simple to run it off the battery. Don't do the other stuff. It, you'll overcomplicate it. And those ones have duty cycles of like a million or something. So just use a relay, it'll be good. Hope I didn't bore you guys to death. <laughs> You did a great job. You know, Will had okay. mentioned beforehand yeah, sure. that he hadn't gotten in, in front of groups before, and I think he did a great job. What do you guys think? Oh, thank you. How about it for Will Prowse? <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys aren't asleep yet. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, sure. Thank you, guys.